chapter twelve of the forbidden way by george gibbs this librivox recording is in the public domain recording by tony oliva tea cups and music dropping in on jack perrault meant being shot skyward for twelve stories in a louis sixteenth elevator operated by a magnificent person in white gloves and the uniform of a prussian lieutenant perrault's panelled door was no different from others in the corridor upstairs except for its quaint bronze knocker but the appearance of a manservant in livery and the glimpse of soft tapestries and rare and curious furniture which one had on entering the small reception room gave notice that a person of more than ordinary culture and taste dwelt within the studio of the painter itself was lofty the great north window extending the full height of two stories of the building while the apartment beyond a library and dining-room with steps leading above to the bedrooms contained all the luxuries that the most exacting bachelor might require to arrive at the distinction of being a fashionable portrait painter one must have many qualifications in the schools one must know how to draw and to paint from the model in the fashionable studio one must know how to draw and paint then discover how not to do either if the nose of one's sitter is too long one must know how to chop it off at the end if the mouth is too wide one must approximate it to the greek proportions eyes that squint must be made squintless and colorful protruding ears must be reduced indeed there is nothing that the beauty doctor professes to accomplish that the fashionable portrait painter must not do with his magic brush he must make the lean spinster stout and the stout dowager lean the freckled spotless the vulgar elegant the anemic rosy his whole metier is to select agreeable characteristics and to present them so forcibly that the unpleasant ones may be forgotten to paint people as they ought to be rather than as they are to put women in silk who were meant for shoddy and men in tailored coats who have grown up in shirt sleeves in addition to these uh, purely technical attainments he must be an infallible judge of character a diplomat a sophist he must have a silver tea service to say nothing of excellent scotch and cigarettes he must be able to write a sonnet or mix a salad discuss the book of job or the plays of bernard shaw follow the quotations of the stock market the news of the day and the fashions in women's hats he must laugh when he feels dejected and look dejected when he feels like laughing indeed there is nothing the fashionable portrait painter must not be able to do except perhaps really to paint jack perrault could even do that too when he wanted to the sketch of the baroness charny on his easel was really sincere an honest bit of painting done with the freedom his other work lacked perhaps this was because it was not a commission but just one of those happy interludes which sometimes occur amid the dreariest of measures it pleased him at any rate and he stood off from it squinting delightedly through his monocle while the baroness poured the tea really madame it's too bad it's finished i was almost ready to believe myself back in paris again he said in french if one could only live one's life backward oh that wouldn't do in a little while perhaps you would be quite poor yes he sighed but think how much better i would paint he stopped before the sketch and sighed again i think it's you baroness you bring an echo of my vanished youth besides i didn't paint you for money that is the difference 
you are going to paint that handsome madame ray yes she's coming in for tea to-day they are wonderful those people he is so original so farouche he is too fond of talking about himself he growled these people represent the western type so common in new york climbers but new york will forgive much in the husband of mrs ray he doesn't care whether he's forgiven or not does he that's a pose all westerners adopt it to consent to be like other people would be to confess a weakness i like him but then the baroness yawned politely all americans are attractive mrs ray i find less interesting naturally madame you are a woman then after a pause it is a pity she is getting herself talked about really that's encouraging with monsieur bent oh yes they met in the west the phoenix of an old romance how delightful monsieur jeff doesn't care oh no significantly he has his reasons the door-knocker clanged and mrs rumson entered escorting two debutantes who paused on the threshold of the studio gurglingly their eyes round with timidity and a precocious hopefulness of imminent deviltries so kind of you mrs rumson good morning miss van alstyne miss champney with jack perrault it was always morning until six of the afternoon you've met the baroness how too sweetly perfect how fearfully interesting the newcomers fluttered palpitantly from canvas to canvas and only subsided when mrs cheyne entered am i welcome she drawled this is your day isn't it jack oh how charming she paused before the sketch of the baroness why didn't you paint me like that i'll never forgive you you were painting me for chain i know it my portrait fairly exudes the early victorian perrault kissed the tips of his fingers and wafted them toward her quite correct dear rita chain was paying the bill now if you gave me another commission i won't you're the most mercenary creature besides i'm too hard up one must really have billions nowadays she sank on the couch beside the baroness it's really very exhausting trying to live on one's income i'm very much afraid i shall have to marry again you need a manager may i offer no thanks i shall be in the poorhouse soon enough get mr ray to help laughed the painter mischievously they say he has a way of making dollars bloom from sagebrush she glanced at him swiftly but took her cup of tea from the baroness and held her peace the knocker clanged again and mrs ray miss janey larry berkeley and cortland bent came in this is really jolly gretchen hello court berkeley mrs ray i've been pining to see your hair against my old tapestry or oh, shades of titian can i ever dare camilla colored softly aware of mrs cheyne's sleepy eyes in the shadow below the skylight she nodded in their general direction and then took mrs rumson's proffered hand and the seat beside her i was so sorry to have missed you this morning she said i'm always out it seems when the people i want to see come in i should have phoned said the lady i had something particular to speak to you about is your husband coming here i-i really don't know camilla stammered he has been away and very busy he'll be back for my dance won't he i think so but he's never certain he's going west very soon he was telling me something about his early life you ought to be very proud of him i can't tell you just what it is but to me your husband seems like an echo of something an incarnation of some memory of my youth perhaps only a long-forgotten dream 
but it persists it persists i can't seem to lose it how very curious it is the kind of personality one isn't likely to forget has he any memory of his father or of his mother no his mother died when he was born his father he doesn't remember his father at all mrs rumson smiled forgive me won't you i suppose you'll think me a meddlesome old busybody but i'm not really i want to be friendly you're a stranger in new york and it occurred to me that perhaps you might crave a little mothering once in a while it is so easy to make mistakes here and there are so many people who are willing to take advantage of them you are very kind mrs rumson i'm glad you think us worth while i do so much worth while that i want to lay particular stress upon it perhaps i ought to tell you what i mean last night my brother dined with us he was in a very disagreeable mood and spoke very bitterly of your husband i suppose he may even go so far as to carry his business antagonism into his social relations with you both how very unfortunate in genuine dismay that is his way he's rather used to lording it over people here and people stand it just because he's cornelius bent i suppose mr ray knows what he is about at any rate i honor him for his independence i told my brother so and we're not on speaking terms as camilla protested she laughed oh don't be alarmed dear we have been that way most of our lives you see we're really very much alike but i wanted you to understand that my brother's attitude whatever it is will make no possible difference to me i shouldn't dare to be a cause of any disagreement not a word child i'm not going to permit wall street to tell me who my friend shall be there is too much politics in society already that is why i want you to dine with me before my ball and receive with me afterward if you will camilla's eyes brightened with pleasure of course i'm very much honored mrs rumson i will come gladly if you don't think i'll add fuel to the flame i don't really care why should you there are reasons the general was most kind to us both because he had something to get out of you she sniffed i could have told you that before but it was through general bent that we met everybody people who have entertained us the janeys the mcintyres and yourself mrs rumson he was the ill wind that blew us the good she finished graciously say no more about it i have a great many friends in new york my child some who are not stockbrokers in the amalgamated reduction company in another corner of the studio a dark one behind a screen miss janey had impounded larry berkeley have you seen man and superman she was asking i've read it well do you believe it don't you think it breeds a false philosophy can you imagine a girl so brazen as to pursue a man whether he wanted her or not no it was very unhuman said larry or a man so helpless saying such dreadful things thinking such dreadful things about a girl and then marrying her it was absurd quite ridiculous in fact no one ever meets that kind of people in real life i never could stand a girl of that sort oh i'm so glad you agree with me do you know larry i really believe that you and i have exactly the same way of thinking about most things it's really remarkable i'm so glad it's a great comfort to me too because ever since i first met you i hoped we'd learn to understand each other better how curious i've been hoping the same sort of thing fearing it too he added dolefully fearing it what do you mean tell me at once oh nothing he murmured i insist on knowing i wanted you to like me and yet i dreaded it too don't say that again she whispered i can't stand it larry i do care for you more and more every time i see you 
but it makes me terribly unhappy to feel that anything is bothering you it needn't bother you yes it does if it makes you miserable what is it won't you tell me i i don't think we ought to be too friendly why not in surprise because it wouldn't be good for you for either of us that's no answer at all i refuse to listen what do i mind if it's good for me or not if i care for you enough to to what is it larry answer me well you know i'm all right now but when i went west my bellows my breathing apparatus oh hang it all the reason i went west was on account of my health my lungs you know you silly boy i've known that for ever so long that's one of the reasons why i fell in love with she stopped the color suddenly rushing to her cheeks as she realized what she had been saying but larry's fingers had found hers in the corner and she looked up into his eyes and went on resolutely i do love you larry i think i always have are you glad then larry kissed her on the other side of the screen to her own accompaniment on the piano the baroness charny began singing tes doux baisers sont des oiseaux qui voltigent fou sur mes lèvres ils y versent l'oubli des fièvres tes doux baisers sont des oiseaux aussi légers que des roseaux foulés par les pieds blancs des chèvres tes doux baisers sont des oiseaux qui voltigent fou sur mes lèvres amid the chorus of approval as the baroness paused a thin little lisping voice was heard oh how too utterly sweetly exquisite i never thought of kisses being like the flight of little birds are they mr bent i thought they lasted longer bent shrugged his shoulders and laughed how should i know miss champney i've never been married married how silly of course not it would be stupid to kiss then so unless es unless es oh you know what i mean don't you i'm afraid i don't i'd be tempted not to understand just to hear you say unnecessary again now you're making fun of me you're perfectly horrid isn't he mr perrault he's a brute miss champney an utter brute that's because he's never been kissed oh how very interesting haven't you really mr bent oh you're really quite hopeless mrs cheyne sipped her tea quite fastidiously and listened bored to the point of extinction nor did her expression change when some moments later jeff ray was announced camilla's face was the only one in the room which showed surprise she had not seen her husband for several days and she noticed as he came over and spoke to mrs rumson that he looked more than ordinarily tired and worried with camilla he exchanged a careless greeting and then passed her on his way to the others the servant brought the decanter and soda bottle and he sank on the divan by the side of rita cheyne it surprised him a little when she began talking quite through him to their host and the baroness whom they were asking to sing again it was a chanson galante of bamberg à la cour à la cour aimait un badinage et l'amour et l'amour n'est dangereux qu'au village un berger un berger si la bergère n'est tendre c'est se prendre c'est se prendre mais il ne saurait changer et parmi nous quand les belles sont légères ou cruelles loin d'en mourir de dépit on en rit on en rit et l'on change aussitôt qu'elle jeff listened composedly and joined perfunctorily in the applause rita cheyne laughed charming baroness i'm so in sympathy with the sentiment too it's delightfully french what is the sentiment asked jeff vaguely of any one mrs cheyne undertook to explain 
that love is only dangerous to the villager mr ray in the city it's a joke it amuses and helps to pass the time oh said jeff subsiding conscious that the question and reply had been given for the benefit of the entire company rather dainty rubbish i should say said perrault with a sense of saving a situation and a client love is less majestic in the village that's all but perhaps a little sweeter ah baroness he sighed tumultuously why should you recall these memories the conversation became general again and ray finished his glass and set it down on the edge of the transom what is the matter mrs cheyne he asked aren't you glad to see me why should i be coolly i don't know i thought you might be i stopped at your house they told me you were here so i came right down you're very kind but i didn't leave any instructions no but they told me i wanted to see you you didn't want to see me the other night i couldn't i phoned you don't you think it would have been in better taste if you had come yourself i left in the morning for washington i've just returned i'm sorry you didn't understand i did you had other fish to fry did you know i came all the way in from the country to see you no woman cares to throw herself at the head of a man personally i prefer an insult to a slight mr ray good lord i hope you don't think i could do that i certainly have never shown you anything but friendship i've been worried over over business matters that's a man's excuse it lacks originality i'm not accustomed to rebuffs mr ray i made the mistake of showing that i liked you that's always fatal i thought you were different i know better now there's no depth too great for the woman who cheapens herself i'm glad i learned that in time don't talk like that i tell you i've been away he protested really why didn't you write me then write or send me some roses i'll send you a wagon load it's too late she sighed it was the thought i wanted ray rubbed his chin pensively it occurred to him that there were still many things with which he was unfamiliar i did think of you why didn't you tell me so then i'm telling you now she leaned toward him with a familiar gesture of renewed confidences there are a thousand ways of telling a woman you're thinking of her mr ray the only way not to tell her is to say that you are what a man says is obvious and unimportant a woman always judges a man by the things that he ought to have done and the things he ought not to have done i don't suppose i'll ever learn not unless some woman teaches you won't you try me again i'll think about it and then with one of her sudden transitions she added in a lower tone i am at home to-night it is your last chance to redeem yourself i'll take it i can't lose you mrs cheyne no not if i can help it she whispered a general movement among perrault's visitors brought the conversation to a pause mrs rumson after a final word with camilla departed with her small brood courtland bent with a mischievous intention of supplying evidence of the inefficacy of the parental will removed one wing of the screen which sheltered berkeley and his own ex-fiancee but miss janey was not in the least disconcerted only turning her head over her shoulder to throw at him please go away court i'm extremely busy camilla smiled but was serious again when bent whispered at her ear my refuge he said yours is yonder she followed his glance toward ray and rita cheyne who were so wrapped in each other's conversation that they were unconscious of what went on around them come said camilla her head in the air let us go End of chapter twelve